Word. It's your boy Carcino, man. Can you? <laughs> I, I, I really can't believe. Man, vanity is amazing, y'all. It is an amazing sin. Can you believe the arrogance and the narcissistic behavior you're looking at? That's DJ Vlad, everybody. Okay. That's Vladimir Labumi. This man is with cheesing and grinning, saying he solved the Tupac case. On his, his channel, solved the Tupac case. This man, for years, have been adamantly crying, I'm not, my videos don't send people to jail. No, these people, they, they do these acts. He's been crying for people to believe he's not the feds. He's not the cops. He's not, I don't work with them. Man. I'm just asking people the tough questions. He was fighting and crying in tears, damn near. Every time someone says, man, if you go black, you going to jail. <laughs> you interview with black, you going to jail. Every time, he has been adamantly fighting that for years. People have turned him down and said, no, sorry, I don't want to talk about gangbanging for an hour. That was Vince Staples. Won't come on your show. Sorry, I don't want to talk about gangbanging for hours. Now, he goes from that to, I saw the Tupac case. My, my channel saw the case. Now he's the dog on a CI. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I don't know what has happened in this world to where people are so blinded, but it is baffling to me. It is completely baffling. It's like they don't even remember what happened 10 minutes ago. First of all, did you actually mention, Vlad, that you were paying Keefe D? Did you actually mention that to the people? Tell the world, was you paying Keefe D to do an interview on your channel? Answer that question to the public. Were you paying the man who's allegedly who's been just arrested for the murder of Tupac Shakur, you were paying this man who said he was involved. His book said it. You brought him on the show to say it. You paid this man. And now you're bragging like you were a Tupac advocate. Get the hell out of here, man. You are so phony. You are the phoniest dude I have seen on here go through these acts. I never would have believed it. Because I never really paid that much attention to you, the person. I would like watch an interview or something. I'd be like, well, they kind of did that. I never paid no real attention to you. And to you forced me to pay attention to you. And I told you, you don't want me to do that because I was going to find things about you. And what I found out wasn't nice. What I found out is how much of a scumbag you really were in real life. And that mop, you, that, that mop thing you got on your head is worse than LeBron James. Look, though, <laughs> everybody knows you're bald. <laughs> okay. You don't look younger. You just look stupid. Okay? You're not fooling anybody. Okay? You can't be a ball head, 300-pound dude with three chins. <laughs> okay? The Amish beard ain't, I ain't hiding it. All right? Not pulling that off. 
And for you to go on John's platform to brag, why would you brag on John's platform and not your own? That that raises another question. Bragging about how your channel solved the Tupac murder. How your channel solved a murder when all the information was in the book and you're just asking him questions on what was in the book. <laughs> How did you solve a murder and solve the Tupac case? But it's amazing. People will say and do anything for attention. I mean, literally, it is sad. It's pathetic. and It's actually pathetic if you're looking for the right word to use. But this is the kind of vulture he is. Why don't you interview some of your people from Ukraine? Hmm? Interview some of your Ukrainians. Ask them what's going on with the war. Ask them what the, they're doing in their environment, the country. Huh? Ain't that where you from? Why ain't you involved in that? Why you keep talking about what's happening in urban communities that don't have anything to do with you. Why are you doing that? Why are you choosing to only talk about African Americans and what they going through in urban communities? Right, he get these up and coming C rated people and interview them and you blow up and then he'll get one like B list person and he'll get all excited that he got them. But this is why the upper echelon don't deal with you. They know what you're all about. Plus they don't need you. You don't ask real questions. You ask clickbait questions. And you're trying to disguise them as something real. So you're not even talented at what you're doing. You're just trying to get people caught up in all kind of cases and all kind of things that weren't probably on the table in the first place. Everybody's like, man, you didn't, man, you didn't want to be interviewed by him. I don't want to be interviewed by that dude. <laughs> like... Well, you guys all think because someone, he's on YouTube like I'm on YouTube. He probably makes more money than me. Good. It's not about money. I don't need his fame. I don't need nothing from this dude. I never asked him for anything when I didn't have a problem with him. I didn't have a problem with this guy until he, cre he decided to have a problem with me because I didn't agree with what was going on with him and Kwame Brown, and I kept it respectful. But he decided to go left and try to attack me. That didn't sit well with me. And he did it at the time when both of my parents had COVID. So he picked the wrong time. And I was down there for that. So now I'm thinking, I got to respond to this in the best way possible. And I said, when I get back home, I'm going to tear you up when I get back. <laughs> you are so lucky I was on vacation. That's what I was telling him. You are lucky. Because if I wasn't on vacation, this right here would be going in another direction. So, yeah, if things went in a way it shouldn't have, but it did, and we had to handle it. Now, getting back to this, how is it that 
No one asked you to go do an interview with Keefe D. You decided to do that. You, I was the first one to interview him. That's your badge of honor? Hmm? That's your badge of honor. You just want everybody to come gravitate to you. It's because of me, my, my interview, I did it. You want to be proud, is that something to be proud of? You want to interview a man who was in the car? Who helped participate in the, the loss of life of Tupac Shakur? Is that what you want? I hated Keefe D and everything about him. I don't want to support his videos. I ain't going to read his dumb ass book. I don't want nothing from him. Nothing. No support. But a lot of y'all are guilty. A lot of y'all were guilty. You know what y'all did? So-called Tupac fans, so-called hip-hop fans and lovers, y'all sitting there listening to Keefe D. He's getting paid all this money going on these shows, talking about what happened. He was in the car when it went down. He gave the weapon. And he's just sitting there boasting and bragging. Meanwhile, everybody else who's hurt by this, and for years, 25 years, they've been eating off his name, and they never really loved him when he was alive. But now everybody want to eat off his name. It's pathetic. Then it gets even worse. You got clowns like academics who probably wasn't even born when Tupac was out there making hit records, don't know nothing about hip hop culture, the, the struggle, nothing, but yet he want to talk about it like he know Tupac or know something about it. Dude, all you know about is little syrupy pants and, and little shoot 'em up dope boy 35. <laughs> if we want to know about them, then we'll tune in to your dumbass. But we don't. So now back to black. Why don't you talk about all this stuff that happens with white artists? Why come we don't see a lot of white artists on your page? And why don't you interview them? Oh, they just don't sell? Because they, they not crooks? Oh, he interviewed the mob guys. You know the mob guy who was a rat? Yeah. He interviewed two mob rats. They had the mob rats fight each other. Hmm. Informants for the government. The man I interviewed, Ayanna Jackson, I was glad he did that interview. I was like, now the people can see and hear her voice, see her face, know she was lying. But that woman turned down interviews when people were trying to find her. She was in hiding, but Vlad found her. And she agreed to do the interview. They dogged him out for that. Why would you interview her? Why would you give her a platform? 
and she lied on pop. But it was good that she did that so you could hear her lie and you could see it and you look at her and say, yeah, use a hoe. <laughs> You needed that. PPD? Come on. Nobody needed him. And what happened when you start paying people, Vlad? They make up new stories because they want a new check. Then their stories don't start adding up. They start forgetting what they said the first time or second time. About the third time they come around, it's entirely different. A whole different story. The world is different. A lot of people are indifferent to the situations that's transpiring around here in the world today. The hip hop industry is, is basically burnt down to ashes. They're not even signing rap artists anymore. And then they're not signing any real rap artists. They're signing gangbangers with microphones. And then they're wondering why they're not selling records because they don't care to sell hip hop records. I told you that a long time ago. They stream everybody music, but do you see pop music going anywhere? Nope. Country music still selling. What's changed? Mm-hmm. They going to control what's hip hop. Hip hop is going to be so disgusting and filthy. To you don't even want to listen to it. They ain't even rapping no more. They just popping. Uh, 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 like that. Like that. Uh, uh. And you that's the song. And if your kids listening to hip hop, they're gonna be some of the nastiest people in the world. Most dangerous people in the world. There's no balance. And you listen to somebody killing 60 people on one song. And then the girlfriend that's with him, she can just slept with 300 people on one song. It's like the world is going blind and everything. Like everybody got blinders on. They don't see what's happening. It's end game for a lot of these people. See, for Black, this is it for him. Because, see, the rest of the world, see us, they look at, hey, yo, Vlad, he's somebody. Oh, yeah. But that's to us. The upper echelon won't even touch him. They look at him as a festering disease. Oh, yeah. He's been blackballed. I found that out in a lot of areas. They don't care about the views he get on YouTube, nothing. They don't care anything about that guy. They don't like him. And these are powerful people in the industry, buddy.
So that door he keeps trying to get to, I don't know. Sorry. You won't get them. No, you won't see Drake on DJ Black. You won't see Rihanna. You won't see Jay-Z. Damn, sure ain't gonna see Nas. You ain't gonna see none of them. Sit down with Vlad. So, my thing is black. Why are you trying to take credit for something you claim you don't want credit for? You claim all these years, you're not the cops, you're not the feds, you don't work with the cops, you don't do anything, you don't set traps, you're just asking the tough questions. Why are you sitting here saying you solved the case? Your page and your website solved a case. We literally solved the Tupac case. No, you did not. You did no such thing. Getting a man to state what he already wrote in a book ain't going to solve a case. You was using it to get views and get money. Profiting off the death of Tupac Shakur. That's what you were doing. Why don't you do an interview and highlight the issues in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Worry about your people. Quit worrying about what we're doing. It's a shame. We give our blood, sweats, and tears to things we have no control over. And we treat it like it's an everyday thing. It's not right. <laughs> Sorry, I had to eat some chips. constructive in this video because talking about Vlad isn't constructive unless we're talking about the destruction he's helped doing by poisoning people's minds by interviewing people who only speak rhetoric well his channel has fallen off because it has no purpose. When you make clickbait videos and your subject matter is pretty much trash, he has uh, only a few interviews that was worth it. But now a lot of people is on to his stick and they don't want to deal with him. Now, you have other people that's doing what he was doing better than him. He don't even have the audacity to be in the room with you. He's You're in the room with a, a, a monitor while he's at home. Doing, the, doing and conducting the interview. So you think at home, he's sitting in front of these people. No, he's not.
Rick Ross crew putting hands on him actually gave him the money and the financing to get all the cameras and the stuff he needed so he can start coming to what he's doing now. And no one's going to touch him because he'll sue. So that's where they at now. Now, you still a Vlad fan? I'm not. Now. Moving forward, what would we like to see more? I want to see you guys take responsibility and say, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm going to demand something from you. The same way y'all demand things from us, go demand it from people like Vlad. He's not going to respond to you and say, hey, I'm not going to support your channel no more unless you start asking real questions, conduct a real interview. Quit trying to get people locked up or ask them stuff that you know is incriminating because then I'm, that's going to make people believe you're working for the feds or somewhere, somebody in the police authority or academy. So, anyway, shouts out to Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Don't forget to support the Bus Life. Jose Rodriguez's channel, Jag Sports with Jose Rodriguez. Welcome to HDTV. I got to make one of HD's lives one of these days. Shouts out to Armando Black TV. And shouts out to Ticket TV, Dreamers Pro. One Crack News. And don't forget, we also have the PS5 giveaway for the VIP Patreon members and those who are on my Screen Fiend movie channel. If you're a Screen Fiend movie level, you also will be included into the raffle. And that is it. We are out. Thanking you.